Hey, this is Loud and Gaming, and we are back with some more uh, programming and making a Pokemon-like game. Continuing with the battle system. Uh, last episode, we got uh, attacking and running and um, defeating the... Well, actually, we got defeated. Um, so, in this episode, I'm going to try to... I'm not sure if I'll be able to wrap it up or not, because there's... Still a little bit of things that we could do, but I'm going to start off with uh, trying to catch uh, another monster and see how that works. So let's go to our scripts here and let's see the bell manager. So we got perform attack. We got clean up now. We'll be this is during the player select. We might want another case called catch. And then let's have a uh, let me just see if I Player select action run catch. So we have something called catch. All right, we're gonna say battle manager dot instance dot um battle state is equal to battle manager. Bell state catch. All right. Uh, whoops, we don't do two equal symbols. Um, now, one thing we're going to kind of deal with the animation. I think later it might not be in this episode. It might be in the next episode. But let's get the catching, and then let's get the um, what else? Oh man, I'm losing my train of thought. The catching and the uh, different types of Pokemon and add that to our damage. I think the catching will be a little bit maybe easier to do. So, let's see. How do you determine the, the catching? It's a good question. I haven't really thought about it too much. All right, let's do this. Let's say, um, oops, we'll just do it all in the, now, you could always take these things out and put them in its, well, I kind of did it here, but do it more than that. Like this maybe doesn't need to be in here, and this doesn't need to be in here, and, you know, we can uh, refractor that. Uh, even when I add the next case, the catch. Actually, let's just do that. Let's create a. Whoa. Just say private void catch monster. All right, and then we'll just allow this to call it. Um, now in Pokemon, you need an object that you would, an item, like a Pokeball, and you have to throw it at them, and that would factor into, you know, Japan, I guess, I think. Like I said, I'm not, like, the expert on Pokemon, I haven't really played it all that much, and I think the last time I really played it was when I was in college, um... I think I've already mentioned that before that Pokemon came out when I was not a kid. And so, it, plus I didn't have the Game Boy when it did came, come out. I had the Super Nintendo, but not a, not a Game Boy. Alright, so let's see. How are we going to do this? We want this to be based on... Based on the monster... 
percent of health. Let's do that first. Float. Monster. HP. Percent. And this is going to be equal to. Um, not sure why I named everything. Uh, monster data. Monster data. This is going to be one dot HP divided by the monster data one or yeah one dot max HP. Is that right? Um, actually, we we'll want to say we want to do the how much HP we have lost, right? And we could do it the other way too. So if it's at fifty. This was, let's say, uh, let's say the HP was, let's say it was 10, and we are at 5. That means we have 5 points left. 5 divided by 10 is 50%. Okay. If it was um, at 2, 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 divided by 10 is uh, 80%. Does that make sense? So the the lower the damage, the higher the percentage percentage is. So now, I should really uh, times this by a hundred. Um, monster, yeah, how can I? Sure, we can do monster percent times a hundred. So that we're not dealing with decimals here. And then we do a int random num is equal to random whoops. Random dot range from zero to a hundred. If random num is less than the monster percent, HP percent. So it's completely based on the HP of the monster. Then we're going to say, uh, let's just debug some of this, I think. Debug.log monster percent. And then we caught plus monster one. Come on, monster data one dot um, monster name. Else, we want to say um, I'm not sure how Pokemon works. Like, if you don't catch it, do you, do you lose your turn? Well, for our example, we're just going to um, go back to the player the player select state 
um, this equal to player select state. All right, and let's just debug this. Just say, I don't know, we missed. We missed catching. All right. Oh yeah, we still got to do um, a text description of everything that happens. So we'll probably definitely have like two more episodes of this. I just don't think I can get all in one, one go. All right, so we're going down, la 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 la. Here we are. And we're going to attack you. Oh wait, why can I not see this? Why is it not working correctly? The There we go. I had to change my, my resolution here. All right, so I'm going to attack you. Let me try to catch you. And it says here we missed catching. Uh, if I pause it, actually, let's just go to play fixed or focused. Uh, we missed. Our percent was zero because we have not damaged it. Now, we can maybe tweak this a little bit to where maybe you always have a chance to catch it. But we'll just leave it like that for now. Let's attack. Shock. Notice how the, the button changed. Don't ask me why. I think in the last episode it was like huge. Anyways, let's do our shock. Okay. We're lower. Let's try to catch it. Nope. Let's attack again. Let's try to get pretty low. All right, let's try catch it. We missed. Wait, percent is zero. Okay. Let's go back here. Hmm. Let's uh, take this out for a second, see if that's the reason. I don't see why that would. All right, attack. So let's try to catch it and see what the percentage, percent is still zero. SP percent. Okay, what am I doing wrong? The max HP minus the HP divided by the max HP. Why am I getting a zero? It's a float. Is it because these aren't floats? That's probably why. Uh, that shouldn't matter. Maybe it's just dividing by that. Let's just change this back to a... Uh, uh, make sure you have floats when dividing. I think that's probably why. All right, here we go again. I like that little moonwalk. All right, attack. I don't even know if... No, what? What the heck? Oh, it's big. So weird. All right, let me catch it. All right, there we go. We missed. Yeah. Shock you again and shock. Okay, now let me try to catch you. Forty percent. Come on, we can we can get you. Maybe we can't. You think by now? Oh no, it says that. Sorry, it does say it right here. We we caught. We caught it. Yeah. All right. So now that we can catch it, we want to add this. Pokemon to our to our Pokemons and end the thing. So we're going to say Pokemon or sorry, not Pokemon uh, game data 
dot instance dot player monsters dot add we want to add monster data one and then what we want to do is load back our scene which let me go back to the player select just copy this and go back here private void return to map now we would have again some we would manage this better to where um, we don't need this here uh, where we would do like the animations and all that kind of stuff and the display the text. Oops, let me put that in the right spot. Whoops, right here. Okay, and then back here instead of that, we're gonna say battle manager dot instance dot return and I didn't make that re turn to map and let me make that public so that we can call it outside of that uh, let's go to the catch sometimes it's good to minimize these things if I mentioned it before since we're not using them then you're not scrolling through all the stuff Oh yeah, we still also have to add it where we can pick our Pokemon. So I guess we do have quite a bit to do. Return to map. All right. But uh, I did uh, get quite a bit of views on my very first the first video I uploaded. I just uploaded the second video. So, appreciate that, and keep uh, liking it if you're seeing this, and subscribing and all that. Um, I might do more of these kind of programming challenges. You know, I have other projects I'm working on, of course. Let's see. This is not my full-time job. This is just a hobby. All right, yay. Now, let's see if we actually have them. Um, let me go to the player. Actually, we go to the Don't Destroy. Ooh, why do I have two? Okay, I need, it, need to make sure we don't have two. Um, I do have two, though. But I have two game data. Oh, I have... Hmm, this doesn't have one, though. Actually, I need to destroy the game object. So, everywhere that I was doing especially with the, the game manager or the game data. I'm destroying this, which is just the script itself. It did not destroy the game object. This is on a game object, so I'm going to destroy it. So that way we don't have to. I just noticed that. But you, we did see. I don't need to test that out. But we saw that we caught the, the thing. All right, so now we are catching Pokemons. Um... How do we get to where we can choose our Pokemon? Um, let's go back to our, our whoops. Why did that make it super big? Um, let's go to scene managers, battle scene. Um, so we got attacking, we got running, we got catching. I think this is going to be kind of interesting how to set this one up, but we can do it. Uh, let's go to our action panels. And let's go to our scene, actually. And 
Bring that right there. That looks pretty good. Yeah, if you're if you if you're watching this so far, and you have an idea of what you might want to see, not maybe next with this because I don't, I'm not going to continue um, doing this. But if there was a another kind of programming challenge that kind of fits me, if you if you're watching my my style of games I like to play and um, what is this going to be called? Not attack, but uh, monster. Uh, like, I really have no interest in making a, a platforming game, really. Um, I mean, maybe, but not really, or a first person shooter. And what I mean by making game, I'm talking about like just just like the bare minimum stuff that's kind of like important so like I could do um, a Zelda like an old school top-down Zelda game I've actually done one for the Ludum Dare before so if you wanted to see see how did I do that um, I, mean, I think I, I already made a video where I talked about that game but if you want to actually see me go through all the programming for it or you know how do you do the scrolling I guess that the main things with that game would be the scrolling and um, you know just fighting enemies all right so what do we want to do here Let's go to the player select, and we're going to say public void change monster. All right, so what we really need is another kind of menu. Um, let's see. Panel, no. We could always just copy this. Control C, Control V. Alright, uh, let's call this the monster change panel since we use the word change. Alright, that seems good. Uh, let's just share it. Let's just show this. And we're going to leave all of this set up. And what we want to do is go to our prefabs and let's just drag this one here. And let's unpack it. Uh, prefabs unpack completely. And we're going to call this uh, monster, monster button. All right, we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna create a new script. Called monster button, monster change. All right. And what the monster change will do is um, we need to change the Pokemon. So in our bell manager, we want a public void change monster. I didn't. I didn't already do that, did I? No, no. And it's going to get an int. Uh, monster num. And for now, there's a lot of things we got to set up. We're going to say monster. Whoops. Don't do that. Monster data zero is equal to monster 
wait, wait, wait. Uh, game manage uh, game data dot instance dot player player monsters uh, monster num okay so when we click on here we're gonna have a serialized field it monster num and we probably want to say using uh, TMP yep the T M pro we want a uh, start we do want the start method we're going to say that the get component TM text that text is equal to uh, game data instance dot player monsters monster num dot monster name you need to have that and actually this should be good component in children so that'll set up the text for the the monster all right now we want to have a public void click um, and what we want to do is battle manager dot instance dot change monster to the monster num all right and if we go to our bail manager let's do it in here mm -hmm. Where am I doing that? Okay. Go to definition oops all right show attack panel so we want to have a public void show change monster panel we'll do it here and we're going to say um we gotta have a serialized field Right. Yeah, we'll do it here. Serialized field, private game object, monster change panel. I, I know I'm typing them differently. Sometimes I'm saying change monster panel or monster change panel, whatever. Um, don't be like me. So I think I put this one first because that's I want the verb and then the noun. Whatever. I probably should have done that like with all of them. Um, okay. Usually I put like the update at up at the top, so um, just ways you can organize your your code, I guess. So we say monster change panel. set active like that okay set attack buttons so we need another one private void set monster buttons okay and we're going to need 
prefab. Just going to copy and paste this and just change the name to monster button prefab. So it's kind of like the attack thing. Um, matter of fact, let's just copy and paste some of that code and just, just change it. Uh, whoa, it's going to move stuff, man. Um, I feel like I don't need these. Just going to call this once. All right. Let's get rid of that for now. For each attack in monster data attacks. No. For each. Um, monster, what are the, uh, monster data, so each monster data in game data dot instance dot player monsters, alright, so we're going to instantiate the, okay, we don't need this, Let's change this to monster button, monster button prefabs, change this to a monster button. Then we're going to say the monster num. Uh, monster change button is, did I not make that public? Yes, yeah, it needs to be public. And then bow manager monster num is equal to let's not do that for for i it's to the length of this and then take all this stuff put it in here like this because we want this to be I okay and then transform is the let's see what do we call it change monster panel here monster change panel all right uh, so set monster buttons and we'll do that at the top of this one set monster buttons all right um When we do the player select, we have to change, we want to say show uh, battle manager dot instance dot show this. Okay. And then let's go back to our battle manager. So after we, after we change our monster, we want to say we want to say show. We want to close that. All right. Um, we're not going to be able to see any of the effects of that. We're just going to look in our inspector to see if it actually changed it. Um, so first, we need to catch one. Then we need. We need to change it. All right, let's uh, make this a prefab. So we just click and drag down here. Now it's a prefab. Let's delete it. And then let's go to our bell manager. 
we need a few things. We need our panel, which is right here. Drag that over. And then our prefab, monster button prefab. Put it right there. All right, let me save everything. You never know. All right. Uh, we don't want to run it from here. Let's go to our scenes. You're not going to have something where in our game data it could remember whether or not we were coming from the overworld map so that when I ran it, it would automatically go back to... Okay, I don't want that showing. Let's... Uh, Well, we got some errors anyways. Yeah, let's just go back to the battle scene and make sure it's not open. And let's see what the problem was. Oh, I never added the, the script. Let's go to our, go here. And then, matter of fact, it has the attack button one. We want to clear it. Move component, add. So what is, what is all this stuff in the world? What is all this, all these scripts? That's weird. I've never seen that. That is really weird. Um, hold up. Oh, I need to have the, um, on here uh, yeah, yeah we want to click so wait 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 uh hold on yeah we want in our monster we want to change this Let's drag this in here and change the function to, why is this saying attack button? Uh, let me remove this. Add. That actually added it back. I did the wrong one. And then we're going to change that to the click. Alright, so that's the first thing. And then we also need to hook up our... Uh, where's that button? This one here. Nope. Action panels. This one. With the clicking, change it to change monster. All right, let's go back to our scenes. And I clicked on the wrong one anyways. All right, let's see if this works. Yeah, I don't think we'll, we'll get to the uh, animation stuff. We're going to have to definitely do another one. Let's just click monsters. Oh, yeah, we got the rabbit horn. But, uh, let's keep playing it until we get a different Pokemon. What What's my chances of the... Okay, let's attack this one until we catch him. All right, let's just see our console. Try to catch you. All right, we got them. So now, let's go here. All right, we're going to click monsters. Oh, yeah. Now we can use this one. Click it. No errors. Now we're going to see if we are actually using that. How can I see it? Do I even have this as a public? Monster names. So I guess I have no idea because it's not public. Um... Well, here, let me attack and see what, see if this HP changes, right? Instead of 18, it should be, well, no. Wasn't I attacking the other one? I guess it would be low, too. I guess there's really no way. Maybe this would change? I don't think it would change. Just attack. Shock. Oh, well, yeah. Wait, no. They, they had the same. They had the same attack. All right, well, we're assuming that's working. Let's get it to display it now. So where are we going to do that app? Uh, 
in our battle manager we have something where we're setting up our battle scene right all of this instantiate data one should have labeled things huh okay this is looping through all the monsters and it's doing that stuff let's just do this uh, let's just grab this stuff here okay and grab all this go to our change monsters and we're just going to put it in here because you, you might want to have a separate function that does all this this is messy actually we can get rid of all this can't we no no we do need that plan we do need this for loop actually we need all this so undo whatever i just did so instead of like doing what i'm doing right now where i'm copying and pasting this don't do this put this in a separate function um All right, we'll do it right now. Private, private set monster uh, infos, info or display or and we want a int monster ID or sometimes I say num or whatever. And we want all that. Why is that? We got to call it a void. So instead of say J, we're going to change all this to monster ID. All right, so then in here, we can say, take all this and say, set monster display J. So we're gonna send it J. Okay, then up here, when we're changing our monster, it's going to be set monster display and we're going to say zero. So that's the data we're changing. We're changing the players. We could have like an enum that says player mo uh, player enemy, and then this would be a little bit more clear in our code. And we use those instead. Like an enum. All right, now let's see if this works. Okay, let's attack you. Attack, get you to be about 18. All right, let's try to catch you. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, we got you. All right, let's go. All right, buddy. Let's change monsters. Go, elect cap. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> we did it. See that? That wasn't too painful. Let's run though. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Now it sets it back to the first one. Go, elect cat. And I don't know if like when you change monsters in Pokemon whether or not you lose your turn. But now in our game, baby, we can get, keep fighting. All right. So let's see if I can add in the um, <clears throat> the weaknesses. <clears throat> so let's see, we might want a new script called um, oh, monster type. Uh, monster type chart, I guess. Mm, 
All right, so what is this script going to do? Um, we're going to have a list of, maybe it's under the monster data. Is there, a, where am I keeping track of the monster types? Uh, uh, right here, dot monster types right here, yeah. And this is going to be monster types. Actually, let's, let's do it like this. Uh, can we have a list of a list? We're going to have a public enum called, uh, I don't know how to call this, but we want to call this type effects. Yeah, that's what we will call it, type effects. And we'll say weak, normal, strong. I don't know if those are the ones. Uh, and then in here, so can I do this all in one script or do I have to make this a scriptable and, and create all of them? Let's think, 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 think. List, so it's that, that needs a list of. Nah, I think we need to do separate ones. So we're gonna have a public um, monster data dot monster type. So this will be the monster type. This will be the type. So we're gonna probably change this to a, a scriptable field or right create set menu here let's see if I can just grab the one from the monster data so we just copy that go here paste this and then we'll change this to monster type chart it's not really going to be a chart but it's going to be a list of A list of monster types for a week. No, hold up. What the heck? Um, hmm. Why is this so, so hard? I know what I want it to do. All I want it to do is say, here are my weak ones, here are my normal ones, here are my strong ones. So we'll just do weak. How can I, how can I do that? List. Really, you want a dictionary. You really want this as a dictionary. You want to do like dictionary. Um, type effects, comma, monster types. Okay, now. We want to say uh, monster type effects. All right. So basically, if this was an earth one, we would have 
the weak, the normal, and the strong as the dictionary. And then in the, actually this needs to be a list. And then we would list all the ones that it, it was weak to. Let's say list. You know what, let's switch that around. Let's switch that around. Let's make the type. Well, I'm trying, trying to think ahead of how I'm going to take the data out of this dictionary and use it. Because what it needs to do is, um, it basically just needs to say, okay, here's the monster type of my Pokemon. Here's the monster type I'm, I'm fighting. So when I'm attacking, or actually, I think it does more of the attack type. When I take the attack type, which I don't think I have that in the in play, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we're going to change the, some of the formulas for Pokemon. It's going to be our own. Uh, so I take the monster type, take the other type. the monster type take that and so so I get the I get this type find this type and then And then we just say, we just do type effects, type effect. Um, we just do like that, right? Or what's the, do oh, I need, do I need a name? No, I don't think I need to name that. I just think I just do like that, right? So. First, I, I, I find this scriptable, right, of mine, which we can put it in a dictionary too. And then I search, I, not search, but I use that key, the monster type key, and then it's going to have a type effect, and it's going to return the, the type effect. That is good, and we want to say new dictionary. Now, in my scriptable, I will not be able to set this up. Okay, so we're going to have uh, serialized fields. We're going to have two lists here. And one is going to be a monster type. Monster data dot monster type. And we're going to say, yeah, monster types. That's good. And then we want a serialized field. List of monster effects. Uh, type effects, type effects, okay. All right, and then here, let's have a public void set up dictionary, because you can't, dictionaries are not serializable. Uh, so what we're going to do is for We do a for each. For each monster uh, monster data dot monster type in we'll call this the monster type in our monster types for each oh, no, no, no. you don't need to do that you do a four for I 
as to the length of the any monster types count and then you just simply say monster type effects dot add we're going to add the monster types i comma type effects dot or not dot i but Let's see, arguing cannot convert monster type to. Hmm. I don't need a list. All right, I know that kind of took a while. Oh, we still have an error here. It was new, oh, I, because I changed that, it's no longer a list. So basically, this uh, monster type has a list of other monster types, and actually it could call itself, and sets some to whether they're weak, normal, or strong. So that's how that works. I hope that makes sense to you. So again, we've got these types. Um, well, let's create one so you can see what it looks like. So in our scriptables, uh, let's go create a new folder called type charts and in here we're going to go create scriptable objects wait 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 where is it oh i don't think i ever create made this a uh, scriptable object let's go back to it All right, type. So we're going to call this the um, electric chart. And we would change this to electric. And now for the types, we would add all the other types. So water, electric, fire, and earth. And so in here, for the effects for each one. And you gotta make sure that these match. This is going to say strong for water, uh, normal. And I think Pokemon has like different different ones than this, but we're just gonna make it kind of simple. Uh, normal and weak. So that's how that works. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, so we got electric. Let's go to our our monster. Let's see. This one is uh, the type is electric. This type is earth. Okay, good. So we're going to be able to see that now. Let's go back to our chart. We're going to create an earth one. Call this Earth, Earth chart, and we'll change that to Earth, and the other ones, Electric, Fire, Earth. So I don't know. Weak to, weak to that. Strong against that. Normal. And normal. Yeah, earth is definitely weak to water, right? Because of erosion. That makes sense.
I guess water's strung to fire. I don't know. You would maybe come up with something, or just find out what Pokemon does and use that. So, but we're just trying to test this out, or just trying to show you how I would how I would do it. All right. So we got the monster chart. We need to set these up. So in our battle manager. Um, now we could do this in our game data if you were planning on using this elsewhere. Um, but since I think we're going to be using it here, um, I don't know if we need a public one, but serialized field. We want a list of these monster type charts monster type charts is equal to that. So we're going to set that in the inspector, drag all those scriptables. The scriptables don't change, so we don't need to make clones of them. Um, but we have now all that data. And that's it. So then when we, now we could do this in a separate, um, like when it sets up the battle, we could do it here. We could do it in the start. Uh, that maybe that'll, that'll make more sense. Okay, so let's do here. Set up charts, and actually let's just do it here. Private void set up charts. Basically, we want to say for each, we want to go through um, each of them. In the monster type charts, and we're going to say monster type chart dot set dictionary. So now we have the the dictionary set up. Uh, so let's just get rid of that. Say set up charts. This makes the code a little bit cleaner when you do things like this, and then I can go to start. Okay, what am I doing? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. And then inside each of them, you know, instead of having like a long function here that has like every single one of these, and then you're like, okay, what does this one do? What's, but then this is very clear. This is doing this. Um, like this is probably too long. Okay. What we're going to do is have a private float uh, or int, I guess. And we're going to hard code this for now. Uh, int called damage type effect. All right. And we're going to send it a type, a monster chart that type effects and I think we can do a switch and we want to say what was wrong here and we gotta name it something type effects and we're going to do a switch Oh, we do type. Okay, so now when we send it, we're going to return, return. So if it's weak, oh man, maybe this needs to be a float. Well, maybe we can just do return two. So if it, we're going to multiply the, the damage, because the damage isn't much anyways. We're going to times it by two. If it's normal, we'll times it by, actually maybe we'll times this by one, times this by two. If it's strong, times it by four. Okay. And then the default
we we must return something though. What is it? Give me these little squiggly things. Oh, I guess we don't have to do the break since we're returning. <coughs> I wonder. Hmm. I wonder if I got rid of default. Yeah, I don't know. Default. By some chance we weren't able to get. It's impossible, right? All right, so then in our attack, how do we do this now? Let's close that. Let's close that. Just gonna close in some of these. And when I mean some, I mean like all of them. All right, perform attack. All right, so float damage, damage amount. Uh, I mean, whatever. I can say float, but it's really an int, int. So we have to have a way to get the weakness, right? So we could do it right in here and say, um, which, how do I do it? <laughs> okay. I need a dictionary. Do I need a dictionary? Private monster data, not monster data. Uh, yeah, yeah, monster data dot monster type. We're going to return a monster type. Call it uh, get monster type. And we send it. What do we send it? Actually, get. Hold on. We want to get the monster type chart, and we're going to send it a monster monster type. So we send it the type, and we say for each monster chart type chart monster type chart in monster type charts so we want, to, we want to get this chart based on the monster type we send it so monster um, if monster chart dot monster type is equal to the monster type then we're going to return monster type chart. By default, we'll return null, which means we didn't find one. All right, so in here, we're going to say monster type chart chart is equal to get monster type monster, get monster get monster get monster chart we'll name it clear uh, we want to say um Um, 
monster monster data attack num dot monster type. So we're saying the type of the attacker. So let's just call it monster chart type. I know this video has been going on quite a bit. I think. I'm not even sure what time I started. Uh, I started around 7, so it's been an hour. Alright, so now we, now we got this. So, we want to say int monster type effect is equal to get what did I call it? Damage type effect. Is that right? Damage type effect. And we are sending it a a chart effect. Um Hold up. All right, let's use the monster chart. Dot. We want that dictionary. Um, let me just make sure I have that public. This needs to be public. Monster type effects. Back to that bell manager. Dot monster type effects. Dot. I know it might be hard to follow right now. I do like this. We want the um, monster data, the, de the defender number, defend number, dot monster type. That does not seem to be working right. Oh, because we need to not do it as a method, we do it like this. Okay, so let me just run through what I'm doing. So we're getting the monster chart. So if it was of the attacker, that's what this function does. Send it the type, search through our list of charts and find that that uh, chart with this type. So if it was the electric monster, we would get that chart. Then we want to get this damage effect. And the way that we do that is we're going to send it. Um, now that we have this chart, we have that dictionary, and so in our dictionary, we are looking for, let's say it was Earth, we're looking for the Earth. Um, in this case, maybe if it was electric, Earth would be um, weak. It returns that, uh, the damage effect, whether it's weak, normal, or strong. I know that's kind of hard to, to kind of to think about, um, but that's how, this is how, like the diction dictionary uses a key and the key is the, the type that is being compared to the, in this chart. Um, so in the electric monster chart, earth would be a key and earth would be set to weak. And so we're sending it the weak, um, monster type effect and then it's going to return a number which we had made down here in this case we would return one so we're going to multiply our damage by that number so right here very end I don't even know if this random number works we want to times it by we could we could do like this put everything in brackets 
or he times it by the, um, what did I call it? That monster type effect. Monster type effect times this random number, this random amount. I don't even think it's really working. Because it's between one, yeah, it, it, this should be three. Which is a huge swing. I would not do this. Um, but whatever. All right. Um, there's no way for me, now this is just going to be a normal one. Let's see, I really need to test it out with the week. Of course, normal would have times it by two, I could have tested it out. So this should only do two damage, I think, because I am weak to the, oh no, am I weak or strong? I think I'm strong. So it should be times four, let's just attack and see what happens. Our shock. Ooh, that ain't good. All right. Uh, I never set up the. Let's go back to our fail scene. I never added these uh, prefabs here, these charts. So let me see if I can get one and two. Hopefully, that's all I have to set up. Uh, I can't do it from here. Save it. Run. Alright, so I should be strong against the electric. So let me attack. Shock. And you can see I did... Um, Let me, let me test this again because I hope that wasn't because of the random number. Uh, I didn't do two. Usually I was doing two. Actually, hold on. He attacked me and did four because he's weak. You see how I did more damage to him? I was looking at the wrong one. I did more damage than he did. We're doing the same type of attack, but his type is electric on that. I did do more damage than him. Let me attack again. Ooh, I'm really doing good. And that could have been the... Um, random amount because now I've changed it where it's between one and two. Uh, which is not a good spread, I don't think, but I can attack him again since it's weak to me. Look at that. So yeah, he's not doing a lot of damage to me because he is weak against me. I am stronger. He's only at six left. We attack, shock him. He's at minus ten. He's dead. I haven't done the coding to to uh, take us back to the other scene. Okay, cool. So that is it. We are just about finished with this. Uh, we have the catching of the Pokemons. We have the weakness weaknesses. Uh, I think the only thing that we need to do is kind of like the cleanup stuff, where we, you know, if if we kill a Pokemon or not kill, but they faint. Uh, we would go back to this scene. We would want to include all the text messages in our next um, video. And then the animations. I'm not going to do a whole lot with the animations. Just maybe show the, the monster moving back and forth really quick. And maybe flashing when it gets, uh, when it gets hit. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, like and subscribe and all that and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you would any kind of different uh, thing you would like to see uh, thanks and I will see you next time